Good evening, THL. Welcome to Hearth Center. It's an exciting time because it is playoff time. Well, at least it's playoff time in two of our series. Pro is still chugging along. Uh, but before we get into that, I am joined, as always, by Lotus Knight. Lotus, how are you tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Donde? I am great. I, I do have to apologize for the absolute disaster behind me, uh, as I am currently in the process of uh, making this room a mess with desk pieces. Uh, it's the land of broken pieces of desk, but we're getting it put together and we're going to hopefully have a new look next week, you know, if I don't lose my mind first. Um, and also joining us as a guest tonight is a man who needs no introduction. So let's talk about Pro Week 9. I'm just kidding, it's Mark Shire. How you doing tonight, buddy? <laughs> I am doing great, Dante. It's uh, it's good to be back. It's uh, been a while since I've been on Heart Center, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm uh, on spring break this week, so I uh, have some time to come. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back as always. Uh, for those uh, loyal Heart Center viewers, uh, Mark Shire was a very prominent piece of last season uh, as a regular, and now he is just too busy for us, just too busy. So he's only going to make a, uh, a guest appearance tonight, maybe some more in the future. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But, we'll see. Uh, we'll but see. We're, we're glad to have you here for tonight, for sure. So uh, with that said, we do want to talk about Pro uh, before we jump into the power rankings and, of course, the matches of the week, which will uh, be featuring pretty much every uh, playoff game that we have uh, on the schedule this week. So what do you say we talk about what happened in Pro last week? Let's do it. Sounds good. All right, here we go, putting it up on the screen for you guys. So we're going to start off, as we always do, uh, at the top of the list with Aeon versus the other guys. Another mm. week another week of uh, a win for Aeon here, moving to 7-2 and two, with an 18-8 to eight victory uh, over the other guys. So, uh, Mark Shire, you were part of the team, of course, but you were off last week. Too busy again to play, but Bug for You came in and got a got a sub win over JR Juggerlaw. Typhoon, uh, a sweep over Surlos. Coles fell 3-2 to two to Dirty Mike. Uh, I got the win over Lefty, 3-1, to one, and our hat just, uh, he continues to dominate with a 3-2 win over Tony Montana. So this is a, a match that I believe uh, was kind of expected result-wise here. 18-8, uh, to eight, strong win for Aeon, keeps them in first place. Uh, Lotus, any thoughts on here before we move on to game two? Um, not unexpected. This sounds like just a very good match. Aeon is putting in the work. Um, I'm sure this is bittersweet for you, Donde, just because you were playing with these guys last season. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do I do love everybody on this team, no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, as for the next match, we have FTL versus Propane Gang. Um, this was a very one-sided match. FTL kind of washed the Propane Gang. So Snake 3-1, Craig of Canada. Berserk 3-0'd, it's me, Mike V. Robobson um, had a DQ win against Silent Redditor, however you say his name. Um, Liquid Ox 3-1, The Town Drunk. And Itachi 3-1, Dr. Bombed. So, very strong win from FTL, making sure they can get every single point. And yeah, Propane Gang hasn't been doing amazing this end of season, so or the whole season. So you want to make sure you can get as many points as you can against them. And this is what happened here. What do you think, Mark Share? Cut out slightly at the end, but I assume you're passing it off to me. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Uh, so I'm not seeing this result. Uh, you know, outside of it, it, I guess you could say it's not a 20-point week because of the DQ win with uh, Rebobson, but I would say he was favored in that match, anyways. Yeah. Um, FDL. Yeah, point right now because they are up um, one match win in this series. They're actually tied with Aeon for number one overall. But I think this is them taking advantage of a uh, of a week against one of the weaker teams in the division and uh, trying to get that number one seed for the playoffs. Uh, but moving on to one of the more exciting matches of the week is the Beard Boys versus the Menagerie. So we saw the Beard Boys lose 12 to 14, and this is actually their third loss. This is a team that in the preseason we thought would be very strong and through a good amount of the regular season has shown they're one of the top teams for sure. They're definitely top three, maybe even the best or the second best team. But losing three... To, to good teams, the Menagerie is, is clearly a good uh, a good team, but you have to consider, you know, where is their head at? Can they maintain this? You know, even if they make like, going to feel when they have 
this string of losses going ahead. But we saw, uh, and we saw, you know, Tuz come in as a sub. He did get the 3-0 win for them, but the, their regular, Buzasaurus was the only one getting the 3-2 win over Smork, uh, on a Sabe, Hockey, and Lesimos all taking losses and um, in a pretty strong spot to uh, to make playoffs at this point. Uh, um, so I'll pass it on to Donde for any uh, remaining thoughts on this. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you're the Beard Boys, you don't you don't want to be panicking too hard yet. Uh, you did do a great job in the front half of the season putting yourself in playoff position, but you started to see it slip a little bit here, and uh, that's not ideal, especially with the fact that there's a lot of competition in that uh, three to seventh range uh, of the standings here. So just one or two bad weeks uh, down the stretch here could end up kicking them out of the playoffs, uh, which, uh, you know, the next team, the unknown here versus bad to the moan, the unknown is is just chomping at the bit to pass them. Uh, they're only one point behind with a 17 to eight win over bad to the bone. Uh, Desharmo did fall to obviously three to one, uh, but then the rest all went to the unknown. Solo Jazz beating Ego Waffle, Catman beating Pasca, Lotus. You subbed in and you beat Manny Skull. Uh, I Ron, did. You, you did, and Ron Mexico <laughs> defeated A2 Battleship. Uh, so the, you know, Avi defeating Desharmo. That's that's a, a a juggernaut battle right there. So that, that could have gone either way. Uh, but I think the rest kind of trended the way you would kind of have expected based on the way the seasons have been going. Other than Lotus, you were a sub of course, and had no uh, pro history, but we know you're a strong player and you can hang with anybody. So I'm not surprised to see you beat Manny Skull. But that's a big, big week for the unknown. Uh, definitely gives them a little bit of separation in that four spot right now to see if they can, uh, you know, hang on for, for the playoffs. And I think, uh, I think we might see them, uh, you know, they, they were, they were a finalist last season. We know they're a strong team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked to see them uh, make make the playoffs here. So, Lotus, your thoughts on that before we move on to the next one? I definitely agree. Um, just seeing them prep and play, they're a really solid team, and they keep catching up. They're just the unknown is doing really well. I think bad to the bone. They need something amazing if they want to catch up these last two weeks because it's not looking great for them at this point. Even though they have some amazing players. Avi is really good. Ego Waffle is really good. Pasca is really good. It's just... I I saw my match with Manny Skull. He was playing well. The main difficulty was just... Honestly, he got... He low-rolled a few matches. I was playing... I don't think I made any big mistakes, so it ended up being harder there. But they need to catch up if they want to have a chance. On the other hand, something that's good for all the other teams is two teams that are pretty good contenders to climb in tied this week. It's a rare THL tie with an exact 14-14, where your mom Ked um, beat C-Mac 3-2, Heat Shock beat Brick 3-1, Nerdstrom um, lost 2-3 to to Inzi. Valdis lost two to three to Jimmy Choose, and Bill Snyder beat Quirky Turtle three to one. So, kind of a surprising result, but not really. I expected this to be a tight race. I didn't think it was going to be tight to the point where we don't even know the result. It's a tie. Um, but just super solid showing from both teams. I think they're both still in the race, but they can't afford to tie or lose anymore. Um, what do you think about it, Mark Share? Yeah. Uh, this, so this is this is super interesting because I think this is one of the this was one of the more anticipated matchups going into the week because both these teams, at least before this week, had had a pretty strong chance at playoffs. Neither team getting that three win bonus is going to hurt them a lot because yes. of how tight the margins are for playoffs right now. I, I think we're looking at it right now. I think the so the cutoff right now, like the un, the unknown, is uh, the last team in for playoffs. They're in fourth right now, and they have I think there's four other teams uh, within ten points of their cutoff, which is at 142 points. Uh, so just really any amount of points uh, could help. However, for getting a tie, you know, 14 points isn't that's not a horrible week, but um, it's now it, it's definitely tough just with neither team getting that bonus to see if any team can make it, especially for Taste the Rainbow, which is um, uh, kind of, I don't know, a little bit farther. Uh, not not great for them. Um, and then going into our last Titans versus Defias. Uh, Defias, of course, one of the weaker teams in pro. Um, not too surprising to see top-hatted Titans take win over them. 
but it might be too little too late for them. Uh, the Titans weren't doing too great. And taking two losses, um, Silver T Fox losing one to three to Epical Noise, and then Top Hat Demon, the uh, the namesake of the team, losing zero swept by Echoname. Uh, I, I think you more points against this team. Most of the teams playing Defias are, are getting four or getting five wins, um, except for Fias one. Um, but I think that might just be not enough at this point for uh, the, the top headed Titans to. Yeah, sorry, Mark Shaw, you seem like you're cutting out a little bit there. Um, but but uh, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. About that. That's okay. Um, yeah, top hat of Titans, you know, getting the win is good. Uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier, or as, as Lotus said earlier about FTL, they really took it to Pro Pan Gang and made sure they got every point possible against right. a team that they knew they should win against. And top hat of Titans didn't get every point against a team that they did it. They did win against, but you know, they didn't even score as many points. Uh, well, they did after the bonus, but they didn't even score as many natural points as tap last or taste the rainbow did in their tie. So there did definitely leave some points on the table there. And that could prove to be the difference here down the stretch. Um, so before we move on to our next topic, of course, Markshire, we thank you for your hard work on the pro power rankings every week. So let's go ahead and pop up your latest creation on screen here and if you are so inclined awesome. there is now a blog post of this as well so you're welcome to check out the blog i'll post that link here in chat momentarily um so mark you wrote the rankings why don't you take us through the rankings here definitely so uh this week um we saw less movement than we've usually seen line for pro this season has been the amount of parity uh like i i said earlier i think between like the fourth and eighth teams they're like separated by 10 points there isn't many more points except the fourth and the first place team uh in the standings right now so that means there are a lot of fluctuation in the power rankings um but right. this week we didn't see a ton um Aeon and FTL all take care of business. They stay at one and they stay at two, respectively, and did take a loss to the Menagerie. Um, I still three team, even losing three straight, like I said earlier, I still they are clearly a playoff team and uh, them at that number three spot. Um, now, the Menagerie get win over the Beard Boys. They're going to move up to number four and the un um getting there uh getting a nice also they're they're going to move up and then uh just moving down to make room for the menagerie and the unknown is taste the rainbow it's just uh you know neither of these teams lost but again just like tying is not really what you want to do this close to the playoffs so they had to take the hit and move down with the eight to twelve no move um all of these teams lost except for the top hatted titans but they beat the 12th ranked team uh which i think that's uh you know good enough to justify moving them up over another team like tap last or taste the rainbow who i still feel is stronger overall and has a better shot at making playoffs mm Uh, hope that's kind of just uh, just the rundown on uh, this week's power rankings. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think honestly, a lot of these teams still have such a strong chance of making it. It just sounds like I could see Aeon, I could see FTL, I could see Beard Boys. All are probably in. I would say Aeon and FTL at this point are going to be really hard to put down. But mm -hmm. it's just such a crazy race for pro where. Anyone from the top eight could make a run for it. Even bad to the bone, if they get insanely lucky, they could still get in, I think. It really, yeah, I, I mean, they have an outside shot. It's so, I, I, and it, it's really going to depend on, I think, the schedules left, because there's two weeks of regular season play left. Um, yeah. We'll just have to, okay, looks like we're, we're having issues with Donde, but uh, uh, we'll, We'll press on for the meantime, but yeah, 
right now they have top headed Titans. They're already down um, one to four Posca taking the, the loss to Starlax, but this team had a ton of talent. I kept them bad to the bone really high in my power rankings for most of the season. But uh, at this point it, um, it, it might be too little too late for them sort of behind. And th and then the other team that you think might have an outside shot would be the other guys. They actually have more points than bad to the bone right now, but uh, they're going up against Tap last this week, and did a stronger showing against Aeon last week to, to have a realistic shot. So most likely going to be one of those teams in the top eight. You know, just a huge amount of competition. Mm -hmm. Are you guys able to hear me once more? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Dante, yeah, so you are online. I, I, I was like, wow, no one is responding to the things that I'm saying, and that was really <laughs> odd. Uh, so I, I have no idea what happened there. I apologize. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you're, you're good. No, you're, you're coming through now. So you're just wondering. I'll I think the important thing else, for us good. to do in this time is to blame the coronavirus. That's really the only thing that we sure. can do, right? Mm. That's fair. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I, no, yeah. No argument. No argument there. Well, that's, well, thank you, Mark Shire, for the power rankings. Do always appreciate that content every week here. Uh, we are going to move on to the legacy power rankings and the hero power rankings, for that matter, in a little bit. Before we do that, um, one l fun little thing we did tease, uh, you know, in the in the post in Discord is we're going to play a little game that we want powered by chat here. So if you're out in chat, uh, think about a few things here. Uh, essentially, uh, we want to have a competition between Lotus and I. Uh, to see if Mark, why don't you explain? You can probably explain it better than I can. L yeah, I'll let you take care of this. <laughs> oh sure. Um, yeah. So, so the the name of this segment is called Boomer or Bust. We want chat, and I I might supply a, a couple of my own. We want chat to uh, give us words or phrases that the younger generation. Um, or things that are not, and this will compete to guess if these are actual slang words or, in fact, not actual slang words, and uh, then can also uh, guess the meaning of them, too, just for fun. Uh, yeah, Chad, if you have uh, any, anything you'd like at here, just go ahead and put it in Twitch chat, or you can uh, send it to me directly. And we will try. We will try our best to uh, understand the way the young kids speak. Um, and probably fail. And probably fail miserably. So we're expecting entertainment. So we'll get to that a little bit later in the show. So think about a few. Go ahead and send in a few. Put them in Twitch chat. Send them to Markshire. Uh, we'll get them one way or the other. Uh, one, one thing that we did also want to, I did want to bring up is we are nearing the end of the regular season. So uh, March Madness, even though we will be having it in April, is happening. We have started the process of discussing things, uh, players that are eligible and whatnot. So it is happening. I didn't want you guys to think that we forgot about it. It's still coming back. Uh, so be, uh, you know, be uh, paying attention to updates on that. We will start getting stuff on the Discord as the playoffs wind down. Uh, we also want to thank everybody who is tuning in tonight, of course. And if you uh, do have a chance to subscribe and have not done so, we would appreciate that as it helps us provide better content and uh, prize pools for things like March Madness. So if you have a Twitch Prime subscription, it is free, and we would much appreciate that. So with that being said, why don't we talk about the Legacy Player Power Rankings? I take it there are no objections to that. No, Let's it do sounds it. like fun. All right, as always, we will start with the honorable mentions. Now, these are the final power rankings of the season. So, if you're not on it yet, you ain't going to be. Bill Snyder, Kura Finwi, 86, Itachi, Lotus Knight. You made it on, buddy. And DeSharmo. I uh, did. You, you did. Mm. It, DeSharmo fell 10 spots, but just like, you know, like an action <laughs> movie where the guy falls off the cliff and he's like sliding down. He grabs it the last second with his fingers, which is in no way realistically <laughs> possible because, you know, no one has that type of grip strength. Um, but right. DeSharmo did. He held on <laughs> for the top 15 somehow. Right. This was a... This is such a stacked um, legacy season. I think if I had played the first match that I couldn't play because I wasn't feeling well, that would have been different because two yeah, swept that match for me. Mm. So, so this so, such a strong season. So many players doing amazing. Congratulations to everyone here. 
Um, a lot of very frequent THL names, Bill Snyder, Itachi, me, and Dusharmo, just... I think Uru Finway has also been around Casual for Casual flex. No, it's just... Frequent THL names like me. Oh, I mean frequent THL names in the sense that, like, they're not new players. <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm just giving you a start. <laughs> yeah, um, no, definitely... Bunch of really strong players here. Um, I'm a little bit surprised to see Bill Snyder at seven and one not be actually yeah. ranked and and still yeah. be an honorable mention. But uh, I guess I guess we'll have to see the rest of the list to uh, really criticize that. Oh, oh, I right. mean, you you know how this show works. You can criticize we, anything at any time. Criticize it anyways. True. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that a lot here. I'm just complaining half yeah, the show. That's the uh, the Jammies method. Is he's just gonna blast me 100 percent of the time. Uh, Jamie's as as you guys might have remembered a former former our side participant as well. <laughs> rip, rip Jamie's he's still around. He he subbed it a couple weeks, but he's been busy this season. Um, to address Bill Snyder, yeah, he had uh, a fantastic record and good game score as well. Uh, but it just didn't really get any signature wins. And you know that's a byproduct of the schedule. It's not really his fault. It's just who he got mashed up against. Uh, you know the the red se- the red four seeds tended to be a little bit uh, stronger than the gold ones overall. And I think that was a big big factor for him. So yeah, you guys are right. I think that that's the most uh, the oddball of the list that so far but uh let's see the rest of the list so that way you guys can appropriately chastise me yeah hey mm. uh so as we talked about last week Coles had the week off and fell out of the number one seed to number two and all he oh. had to do was win to take it back from ron mexico in any capacity and Coles got swept by tris so Coles falls to number three he had a great season mm. Mm. But only third. Uh, and Ron Mexico, the crossover player of the season from last season, is the number one player in Legacy in the <laughs> season 14. I had to remember what season it was. We've uh, done so many of them. Uh, wow. <laughs> Lemons yep, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's just, it's, they, they fly by. Lemons at 7-0. and oh, Very impressive as well. Robobson held steady at 4 with a 7-1 and one finish. Zoroshio crept right into the top 5. And Shubaga, who tried to ruin this list by playing his match very early in the week. Uh, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> he and he tried stuck. his best. He tried his best. <laughs> But I had I had a way to get the get the correct uh, standings, so you know, suck it. And mm-hmm. uh, he's six and two. Liquid Ox finishes at seven. F Sirachi uh, creeps up from ten to eight. And Triss, who swept Coles in the final week of the season, blasts onto the scene with a ni- with the nine spot. And Sanguine finishes in the top ten at six and two. So a lot of strong players there. Uh, she was she is nineteen and fourteen now. You're right, Sage. He deserves it for trying to ruin the power rankings. On me. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Shu. Love you, Shu. Um, I just want to note, um, first, as I always say, congratulations to all my albatrosses and to everyone in the ranking. Um, just a lot of solid players doing amazing this season. Um, a shout out to duos, um, Shubaka Liquidox was actually a very strong duo. Mm. Yeah. And they're here as well. Both of them doing really well here. No, Great yeah, re- re- really nice to see that. That um, we do have a uh, chat criticized on day asking where is Bill? I knew that was I gonna happen. He, he should be in yes. the ten here, but you know he just he didn't get enough signature points at the end of the day, which is really the the best measure of a good player. It's not game wins or match wins. It's it's all about the signature. And uh, if you can't get it done, there, man, yeah. I mean, why are you even? Mm. I, I want to know that the other reason, and Dante's not saying it, but the other reason is he wants to rub on Cole's face that Triss beat him. So he put Triss in the ranking uh, for oh, it. No, 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 so no, 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 no. I mean, I, okay, I do want to rub that in his face. You're not wrong about that part, but that was not <laughs> the motivation for the stand. <laughs> uh, um, no, I mean, I, I know the, 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 so I can understand that. That. But uh, yeah, I, I have to say I do feel slightly nervous seeing Ron at the top spot, considering I'm playing him this week. Um, after just taking the week off, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Luckily, he's been doing um worse in pro than he has in legacy. So, but uh, but still, still yeah. You know, I hear well, when we'll you don't play matches. for a week, it saves up your your RNG. It's kind of like mm. you know, like you just stored it all up inside you. Uh, I didn't yeah. say whether you get the, the good RNG or the bad. You know, RNG. I have we'll heard, find out I have heard that. 
<laughs> yeah, gonna be gonna be a, a lot in my match. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is the that is a wrap on Legacy. Uh, thank you again for everybody who uh, who played this season, who's still playing. For, uh, you know, playoffs uh, as we'll talk about here shortly are are coming up. So uh, you know, far from the end of the season, still three weeks to go. Uh, but we also have to talk about Hero, which also finished its regular season last week, which means the final Hero Power Rankings are available. So um, any predictions here before I put them on? I, I, actually, I'm not going to give you guys predict stuff because you just you already saw them all. Yeah, we <laughs> we already know. Just. <laughs> Some weeks I don't post it in chat in in, in the the Discord just to see mm. like genuine mm. reactions, but this week I did post it. Just to keep us on our toes, you know. I, I... Here comes the honorable mentions at you. This is the uh, 11 through 15 spots. We've got Sage, Yellow Dart, Quaz, Trippy Toad, and Hockey Boys. Uh, so Trippy Toad was uh, right near the top for a while. Lost three weeks in a row, fell all the way to the top 15, and just manages to creep back in. Uh, Sage, no, please, no, no, why? Uh, Sage, you were you were in the top 10, buddy. You dropped to 11 this week, and uh, Yellow Dart comes back uh, into the top 15 as well. Quaz hung around the top 10 all season, couldn't quite finish it out, uh, but these are all very strong players. And, and as we'll see, as Lotus has mentioned before, uh, a lot of consolidated uh, records here in the top 10 as we move in. Yeah, um, definitely the thing. Well, actually, we're talking about that until until slightly later. But um, it's yeah. I mean, I mean, Quaz falling. It's it's unfortunate he drops out of the top ten, but um, still a, a solid showing this season. And as someone that stayed at fifty PR for like most of his career, it's it's nice to to finally get a winning season and honorable mention under his belt. And uh. Then aside from that, also like aside from Trippy Toad, these are all like very heavy THL veterans. Sage, Hockey, Yellow Dart, all guys that have been along for a really long time. So I, I think shows how how important uh, being familiar with the format is uh, in like in LHS for one, but also in closed list LHS, which is a, a different animal entirely. Definitely. And uh, Trippy, I will say, you know, he's no stranger to competitive Hearthstone, so much mm. so that he is a mod in the Comp HS Discord. So uh, he is very, Ooh, very well versed okay. in, uh, in in the competitive side of Hearthstone. So I'm not surprised to see him come in and do very, very well in his first THL season. Lotus, any thoughts mm -hmm. on this uh, this list here before we move to the top 10? Um, All strong players, I think. There's something to be said about how the records in Legacy have been more extreme this season. Which is typically not that common, but quite interesting. And I talked about it a few weeks, but I just wanted to remind you all that that is a thing. And it's been happening this season. Um, other than that, great players all doing really well. Yeah, congratulations to everyone. Yeah, that's um, Lotus, that, that, that's a good point. I just noticed we actually have no one uh, had zero or, un, or one losses across. Yeah significant enough sample size which is pretty surprising just for a thl season as a whole you don't see that happen very often um you, you know no one going undefeated pretty likely but usually you get at least one or two guys you know, you know just one loss on yeah especially for hero this is actually even yeah. more common in hero yeah definitely well, now that you guys have given it away, that there's no one loss. Not that everyone can't just look at the standings page. Well, you can't. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not like this is hidden information, but here's the top ten. Publicly uh, available yes, information. Publicly available <laughs> info. Uh, Desharmo finishes out the season uh, with a 7-2, 21-12 mm. game score. He jumped from 3-1 to one in the final week of the season as Agent Peewee and Ron Mexico both uh, took a loss in the final week of the season. But you'll notice Ron, who was number 1 in Legacy, is number 3 in Hero, so he's still pretty good. Uh, Blue Spartan, after <sighs> falling two weeks in a row, jumps back up two spots to number 4. Lil Harthy as well moves up two spots to number 5, and Ted fell two spots to number 6. Icicles, Avi, Catman, and Anfall, uh, they are the ones who finish out the top 10 very impressive um, seasons across the board. Six and three for all four of those uh, four of those players. All very very close. Yeah, um, really nice stuff here. The uh, I I would say I mean obviously go at number one in the other list. Um, definitely a front runner for for crossover of the or for crossover player. 
um, for this season as well. Um, one thing to note is that according to the algorithm, uh, actually Blue Spartan, Lil Harthy, and Big Ted are all tied, I believe. So this is just sort of a, just like putting them into four, five, six um, in alphabetical order. So if we were allowed some artistic license within that, I would uh, probably pop the up either one or two spots just just based on his game margin um but mm -hmm. that's the main thing i would probably change about these yeah i guess uh yeah if if the algorithm could have differentiated big ted would probably be uh based on based on if you're looking at game score as the tiebreaker he'd be number four and then blue spartan be number five and will hearth be number six yeah so, mm -hmm. yep, I can definitely see that argument. But yeah, essentially, essentially, you can just classify them as 4A, 4B, and 4C for all intents and purposes there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. All right. Well, that um, uh, that ends one of my favorite parts of the season, which is uh, obviously the player power rankings. But uh, big shout out to Hat, because he automated that process for me because he really hates my manual work. Um, which Mark Shire knows very well. <laughs> it seems like there's something new every week that he realizes that I do by hand and he freaks out on me. And he's like, I could have done this for you in 20 or 30 minutes. And then he proceeds to do it in 20 or 30 minutes uh, and makes my life so easy. Uh, I was, I was joking. Not, well, I mean, it was, I was, I was joking about it, but it's not a joke. I actually would do the um, power rankings by hand for the entire last year. I just did all those numbers by hand every week and, uh, it was a little time consuming. So he, uh, completely <laughs> spun, uh, spun that around. And now I have all this free time to put a desk together, you know, for 12 hours in my week and still not have it completed. Uh, so really I mean, putting it to uh, a funny anecdote for that, but my advisor is much older here. My PhD advisor, he's 70 year old. And he's a bit of a technophobe. And then the first semester, I was uh, TA for him. He asked me to compute the final grades for everyone um, and make sure they're all set in the class. And I do all the math with a macro. And it takes me around a minute. And I come back to his office. And he's like, wait, how did you compute all of these this fast? I said, oh, I just had a macro. It computed really fast in Excel. It turns to me and says, oh, can you just do it by hand to make sure they match? <laughs> <laughs> so I actually had to compute 15 uh, grades by hand, one by one. It was not fun. I, I, yeah, I can't remember uh, what it was. Uh, academia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had a similar similar event this week where um, someone – I'm training for a new job. The guy told me, screenshot this real quick. So I, you know, Windows Shift S, and he's like, whoa, 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 what'd you do? I'm like, I took a screenshot. I clipped it. And he's like, what – how'd you do that? I'm like, these three buttons right here. He's like, mind was blown. I was like, wow, I just revolutionized your entire day. Uh, <laughs> did, <and laughs> did he use your phone, take a picture of the computer screen? No, he would and, like, he would like, you know, print screen and then like save the file. And like, I was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna clip this and paste it right into an email. Uh, Boom, we're done. Yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, that, uh, that was funny. He, he freaked out for like 15 seconds. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, now that we've, now, it, it's, that's it's kind of funny because that's like us bagging on boomers, but then uh, you know yeah. we're, we're we're about to embarrass ourselves in a little bit later. So for anybody who joined late. Um, if you have uh, something that you would like to guess whether or not, for me or Lotus Knight, whether or not a phrase is something that is actually something the young kids use nowadays, or if it's a fake phrase, you want to send it to Mark Shire and he's going to test us uh, for boomer or bust, and he's just going to see if uh, we know what the cool hip slang the kids are using. So send him real slang <laughs> or send him fake slang and see if you can trick us. You probably will. But while we're, <laughs> while we're finishing up... Uh, or before we finish up uh, matches, of the, before we get to that, we're going to finish up with matches of the week. There we go. I couldn't speak for a second. Uh, because we are entering the playoffs, of course, uh, every game is a match of the week at this point because it's win or go home. So let's talk about legacy yeah. first, why don't we? Mm. Mm hmm. Zoom. That's the sound it makes in my head when I make the transition. <laughs> Fourth and inches versus the stubs is the first uh, first game. So that's the one seed of gold. Fourth and inches versus the four seed of red. The stubs snuck in at the last second, though. Admittedly, they were a team I thought was a playoff contender at the beginning of the season. Uh, I don't think they were in the top four really at any point until the very very last week. Doesn't matter. You're basically zero zero now. Points don't matter. It's just win your week. So uh, looking through the list here, I gotta say I do still think the fourth and inches is favored. 
Um, I don't think it's as clear cut as one might expect by looking at the points. Um, Mark, I'll start with you. What do you think about this matchup here? Who do you think comes out and makes the semifinals? Um, uh, I think it's pretty clear cut. I think that that fourth and inches is definitely the favorite, and I don't expect it to be particularly close. Um, they, they've, yeah, fourth and inches has just shown that they're a more dominant team. Um, and while it is impressive that the stuff make it in in the last minute, um, just just looking at this team, um, especially looking at Atakshi and Ron Mack leading at the one and two, not only are they really good players, um, I know they also put in a lot of prep work and also are really good at helping out the other members of their team. Um, right. And I, I expect them to do very well. So um, I I would expect fourth and inches to take four out of the five in this matchup. So let's say you were putting a percentage on it. Like you said, the stubs have X percent chance to win this match. What percent chance are you giving the stubs? Percent chance? Uh, I'd say I give them 25 to 30% chance. All right. Um, it's, it's, it's Hearthstone. So I, I, nothing, I would never go out and say this team, like 90, 95% chance. That, um, yeah. but it, in this case, yeah, I'd say fourth and ninjas. Maybe they're looking at like 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 seventy five ish percent favorites. I think it's it's funny because if you you know you, you brought up it's Hearthstone. Obviously, when you look at um, you know stats on HS three player vicious syndicate, and you see like a matchup that's just overwhelmingly favored for a class or for for an archetype, you're like, all right, seventy five percent chance to win. That still means one out of four people lost that match. There was somebody who got very upset because they were super favored and lost, and that means that there is still a chance that the Stubbs can can pull this out. And I think uh, I think it's going to come from the three seed in Kurafinwi over your Mumkhead mm-hmm. um, siege over Super Mario. I, I really think it would have to be probably the bottom half of the the roster, the three through five there. But Lotus, what do you think about this matchup? I think I agree. This is definitely stacked on fourth and inches. They have been an amazing team. Um. If Itachi and Ron Mexico can win this week, which they look really favored, it's going to come down to how much can they sweep in the bottom. So the Chronic needs to win against Rage Doppel if they want to have a chance. And the Chronic has not been doing super well this season, and Rage Doppel has been tearing it. So that's going to be a big part of it. And I think if Rage Doppel can win, it's just going to stop it for the stubs. I actually think the fifth seed is going to be a very important match more than any of the others here. Yeah, I Yeah, think... this is you, you go first, Marsha. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so I, I was this is super interesting to just look at um specifically looking at the chronic and looking at your mumkhead. Um two and six and three and four are not great, but like the chronic is a guy who has played in yes aspirant series and done very well. Multiple um, time and... all-star. Mo- yes, and 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 Tio Shell in the past has done extremely well, usually in the four and then five seed, but also in Aspirant, which is generally I would say better than what you expect in the THL four and five seed. Seeing him at two at six, I don't think that's very reflective of where he is in the Rage Doppel. So I could definitely see him taking that. But then on the contrary, we see three and four your Mumkhead going up against six and two Griffin. Your mom- Mumkhead is uh, has has done extremely well in pro, sitting at eight and two right now. And I mean, it's still conquest. Yes, it's you know it's open versus closed lists, but uh, overall, you know, you're still playing Hearthstone, you're still playing conquest. I would say in this case, even though despite the disparity in these records, your Mumkhead is probably favored in that match. So uh, just the point being that I think there's a lot more to look into besides just the base records um, of these players. I definitely agree with that. The Chronic is a potent player no matter what uh, the record says. So, yep, I think, uh, I, I gotta say, I do think 4th and Inches wins as well. Uh, I, w- I would probably put it closer to say, like, 60% in favor of 4th and Inches would be my, my mm, guesstimate here. Okay. So why don't we talk about Dad Legend versus Toxic Reinforcements, which was the two in gold versus the three in red. Uh, so this is a you know much much closer points wise. Only one point separates these teams, and only uh, one win separates these teams. Dad Legend with two ties because they were fancy like that during the season, and they're they're off to a quick 4-0 lead as Honest Abe took Tris down with a sweep earlier this week. So who are these crazy people playing on Tuesdays, guys? Come on, let's wait for the yeah. you know let's what? wait for the shows to talk about the matches before we play yes. all of our games. Yeah, th- 
think think of the priorities. Yeah, think right? of the yeah. Think of the content. Think Your of the content. schedule. Yeah. THL content. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 be. Oh, I should I should mention. Um, by the way, in that previous matchup, Super Murloc versus Siege is scheduled to be on stream. Uh, that is a Saturday Ooh, night match at okay. 8 p.m. Yeah. Um, we actually still have a spot open at 9 p.m. on Saturday too. So if you guys want it, let me know. That's not nice. So That'll be good. I think that one's yeah. pretty pretty evenly matched. Yeah. I, I do. I think I think that's a great matchup for sure. Um, Dad Legend versus Toxic Reinforcements with, uh, like we said, 4 nothing. Dad Legend out of the gate here with Myanodon played Icicles. Yellow Dart's going to play Carlton Banks. Bill Snyder versus F. Sirachi. That's a huge matchup. Turd Herder versus Chubbs Peterson's Hand. So we talked about signature wins. We talked about um, the schedule for Bill Snyder. This is his test right here. This is it. F. Sirachi is phenomenal. He's been playing great. And if he can take him out, I think he erases any questions that the uh, power ranking algorithm had about him this season. Yeah, um, th this is tough. So um, I, I'm the matchup slightly different. Uh, just looking at, you know, the records on toxic, toxic reinforcements here, I feel like they've kind of been carried by F. Sirachi's dominance. Um, no one else is more than one game five, um, and you've got like chubs you know sitting at two and six not really where you want to be in the five seed um this is probably the point where this is the test can f sirachi put them over get that guaranteed win he's been getting them four points every single week except for one right. this season um and and in this case it's very close and probably give bill the edge but um either way i mean you don't get two players um two seven and one players going up against each other often especially in in the four seeds so that's going to be a really exciting one mm -hmm. sorry i thought i was going to sneeze there for a second or also, oh, uh, Lotus, uh, I was hoping to get your thoughts as well, but I also didn't want to sure. blast off into the microphone, so I apologize for the delay. No, no worries. I think, honestly, this is another really strong match. Toxic Reinforcements have been growing a lot in the recent weeks. They've been doing an amazing job. They beat um, the Zilfs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they've just been doing really well. I, I think... don't remember that week. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, this match, I'm thinking Myanodon is going to beat Icicles. I think Yellow Dart is going to end up beating Carton, Carlton Banks. They need Sirache to bring it against Bill Snyder, and that's a super hard match. Bill is a very solid player. He should not be playing on the four seed. And yeah, I agree with that. I don't know about the five seed. Um, TH is a good player. I don't know Chubbs very well, so not sure here but i think i have to give this to that legend especially after knowing that they won the one so i'm i'm also going to give it to dad legend here um turd herder has really turned it on this season it's, it's actually very encouraging we've seen multiple uh like five seed 50 pr players or sub 50 pr really really come into their own this season turd herder being one of them saku yeah. has really been killing it jim phillips is killing mm -hmm. it too like these are all players that um have Quas, not necessarily Quaz, yes, absolutely. Players that have, yeah. mm -hmm. I think, finally, maybe something, you know, is clicking on the team for them, or just, like, they're feeling the meta. I don't know what it is specifically, but uh, it sounds like you're pronouncing his name Shiracha. Uh It does kind of sound like that, Sage. Thank you. Sage must be hungry. Um, but it's, it's awesome to see that. I think that makes the five seed way more of a dynamic place. Like, you, you've got, you know, the matchup above with the Chronic at 260 in the five seed and Rage Drop at 175 in the five seed. And I think you've got guys like Turd Herder who can beat players of that PR caliber. Um, so I'm going to pick Turd Herder in this match. Uh, I also am going to pick Bill Snyder. But here's my little upset special. My anadon has been on vacation for a couple weeks. Uh, he's been over in Israel, which is sweet. That's awesome. Um, maybe mm. he's been playing a little bit while he's there, but I think he's going to be a little more rusty, and I think Icicles is going to be the winner for Toxic. So uh, I do think that Yellow Dart will get the job done, and I still think it will be a win for Dad Legend, but uh, I'm going to say Icicles upsets my Anadon. It's not an upset by the record, but uh, by by the fact that everyone knows my Anadon is one of like the top players in THL, I think that that might be... Um, you know, if you haven't been paying attention to Icicles before this, you'll know that he's legit after he gets this. Oh, one. yeah. So, uh, I, d I do have a couple of thoughts on that. First of all, isn't it? Isn't it Icicles? 
like I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He, so something that got brought up and yeah, it, the it's, THL. He, he likes it either. Podcast. I think he likes Isaacles better. Yeah. Isaacles. Um. Okay. So my thing is, yeah. I, I mean, this isn't. It's not an upset by. P- it's not an upset by. I get saying it's an upset because yeah. Yes, Myanodon does have a little bit more history in THL. He's obviously a very strong player. I, I would, I, I think I would say Isocles is the favorite. Isocles is also extremely strong to win this matchup. Um, unfortunately, he is probably the only player of Toxic Reinforcements I would feel confident picking to win their matchup. Um, I think the other three are, are likely to lose. Um, F. Sarashi and Billy is going to be very close, like I said earlier. But uh, but yeah, um, we'll see. Should should be should be should be close either way. But having that you know four lead is going to be tough to to come back back for Toxic. Definitely. And unfortunately, none of these matches on stream as far as uh, as we have <laughs> on the schedule yet. That could change, of course. Like I said, still got one slot left. So if anybody wants to play, let us know. But uh, let's move on to the second half of the Legacy Playoff Bracket, which let's start with Pod People versus the Hot Zilfs. This is the uh, two or the two seed in red in Zilfs and the three seed in gold in the Pod People. And uh, I'm super hyped for this top match, by the way. Ridiculous Hat versus Cold. <laughs> oh. That is uh, not, only, yeah. not only two Aeon teammates, but uh, two very, very strong players. Uh, Zoroshio versus Robobson is another huge match. Uh, I will try not to mess up against Madden Arms and Fall versus Wicked Good, and then you get Saku, who uh, has jumped onto the pod people here in the last half of the season, playing Jim Phillips, two of the players we just talked about in the last segment. So um, I think you guys know how I feel about this match. It's going to go 5 0 Zilfs. But, Lotus, what do you think about it? This is, a, this is going to be a tight match. I don't think this is going to be a 5 0 for anyone. Uh, oh. Let's start from the bottom. I think Saku <laughs> versus Jim is an interesting match. Um, I'm going to look, just looking at the lineups, Jim has gone with a lineup that's actually looking favorable against Saku. So I'm going to have to go with Jim for this one. Um, Wiki Good probably beats Anfall in terms of record. He's been having a better season. I think he's going to take this one. I think Donde versus Mad at Arms is actually going to Donde, surprisingly. Wow, ouch. Rebobson versus Zeroshu is an amazing match. That match is just two seed prime time over there. Um, is that on stream? Uh, none of these are on stream, unfortunately. No. Huh. I, I'm playing Mad at Arms like late Thursday night, so. Okay. It's yeah, a, that's not happening. No, no, no stream lives there at like 11:30 on Thursday. Yeah, and um, Rib- uh, Ridiculous Hat versus Colts is another very solid match. Um, Colts has been having an amazing season, but Hat is just a very solid player, so it's hard to say. Yeah. I think this is going to end up going to the Zilfs, but I think it's going to be a 3-2. All right, Marsha, what do you think here? Um, I'm just surprised that the pod people are in the playoff. Uh, the, the, they have consistently just like been you know 500 team all season i cannot remember the last time unless they made it last season paying attention but i don't think so i cannot remember the last time the pod people were in the playoffs so that was just very surprising to me um aside from that i do do, yeah i i would expect the zills to take it um it's just just the amount of talent on this team is insane and and like lotus was saying uh yeah, Jim and Saku, um, probably a pretty even match. But just looking at these class, uh, I would I would give Jim. Um, but overall, you know, a bunch of really talented players on both teams. So uh, we'll see what happens. Excited to see. <laughs> Lotus. <laughs> Lotus. <laughs> um, last matchup in Legacy is the Galacronies versus the Good Luck Albatrosses, who uh, had a little bad luck, unfortunately, to start the week as Sage has defeated Chewbacca for nothing, well, three nothing, with four points going to the Galacronies. So Galacronies is the four seed. Uh, Good Luck Albatrosses is the one seed in red. 
this is probably not the expected start uh, based on you know the records and the uh, the points. Uh, with good luck, Albatross is being strong all season long, but Sage has been strong all season long and uh, gets them off on the right foot. So we've got Boozasaurus versus It's Me, Mike V. We've got Ghost versus Desharmo, Two Star Mako versus Catman, and Based Ink versus Lotus Knight. I like that matchup because I know you two have been working together on School Stone, yeah. so that's a that's a cool little uh, little matchup there. So Lotus, I'll let you start when t- with you know you want to talk about your own team. Go for it. I mean, I think my team is going to win, well, but I think we have a great match this week. Um, Chewbacca versus Sage. Chewbacca has been having a crazy season. Sage is also a really good player, so it's not surprising as a result. Um, I think me versus Bay Zink is going to be a really solid match. I've been practicing a lot, so has Bayes. Mm. So looking forward to it. Catman versus Mako. That looks to me like a Catman very favored match. Mako's a great player, but Catman is just so strong. Um, Desharmo, I think, will continue his climb this season versus Ghost. And I think it's me, Mike V, is going to beat Booze. So I think we're going to win as a 4-1 solid matches all around. Uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, so I am going to go the other way and pick the only the upset that I have picked so far this evening and say that the Galcronies are going to win it over uh, sorry Lotus um, it's it's tough because we have the benefit of seeing that Sage already swept Shu which is obviously just a you know huge it's just huge right sure. now I'll be able to say that saying that they're already up 4-0 um, I actually feel really good about Boo's uh, beating it's me um, Mike, Mike is is a great player, but I think Booz has played kind of below his talent level so far. Only four and four. I think he's a much stronger player than that at the four seed. Um, so just assuming that Booz wins that, then the Galacronies only need to get one win out of their one, two, and three seed. And they're either like close to being even or unfavored in probably all of those matches. I think they can pick up one win somewhere and then uh, get get that upset and uh, yeah, and then and then head into semis next week. Feeling good. Here, here's my prediction for the remainder. Here, I think I think every series goes to five games of the remaining four. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a slugfest no matter what. Uh, <laughs> I do I do think Dusharma gets the win. I think Lotus gets the win. I think Mako gets the win, and I'm leaning to Mike V. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning to Mike V. So if my if my math is correct, that means that's three wins for Albatross. So that's nine points plus the three bonuses, twelve. And then that means fourteen with the two. So then we're looking at one win over for Galacronies gets them to eight, and then six. It's going to be a fourteen fourteen tie with GLA winning. <laughs> <laughs> on the tie break because of the three <laughs> series wins. So that's you want my, it to be that tense? That's my uh... <laughs> that's my bold prediction for this series here is everything finishes three two. It's a tie fourteen fourteen with GLA taking it in the tie break. Oh man, that's just always predicting a tie. <laughs> oh no, basically you said, "Hey man, call this coin," and I said, "Side." And yeah, which is just really not a likely outcome. But hey, you know what? Uh... We're going for it. So. That's uh, that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So you guys may remember we've been talking about legacy, but uh, Hero is also in playoffs. There's only two matches because it's yeah. right to the semifinals with the uh, with Hero. So let's talk about those real quick. We got Dad Legend making another playoffs versus Team No Pros here. This is the one versus the four matchup over in Hero. Uh, Icicles yet again in the playoffs. Yellow Dart, hey, he's here again too. Starlax, Hockey Boys, and Sage, hey, look at that. That's three players who were also in Legacy versus Skittles, Agent Pee Wee, Disco, Pasca, and Electabuzz, five players who were not in the playoffs. So they are going to be able to devote their full effort, time, and effort to beating Dad Legend over here in Hero. Is it enough, Markshire? Uh, I, so, sorry, can you say that? I was trying to look up a uh, Zoomer for you. <laughs> Do we think that Team No Pros here, the four seed, has the juice to beat the eight and one Dad Legend? Oh, absolutely not. Dad Legend has no. been so dominant all season, and uh, I, I, I don't think it's going to be close. I just, just want to point out, I 
wrong about a lot of things. I, I did do pro power ranking every week. I did one edition of hero power rankings in week one. The one thing I was right about was Dadley as a the clear number one at this whole season. And I, I think they're definitely going to take it against MBH. Lotus, what do you think? Yeah, I think I agree. Um, I'll keep this short. I think that Legend wins pretty hard. Wow. All right, so we're penciling Dad Legend into the finals just that easy. I'm actually looking up just to make sure there were no matches played in between when I took a screenshot. There were not. Okay, that's good. Didn't want to have incorrect info for you guys. Um, yeah, I think I think Dad Legend wins. I think the problem with predicting like a blowout is we're at the playoffs now, and every team is going to be near the top. As good as Dad Legend is, Team Zone Pros here, it's not like they're a bad team in any way. Uh, you know, Pasca and Electabuzz were, uh, or actually Ant Skittles, all below 500, but they're all potent players, and I think that they'll have a good chance uh, to to take some games, but I don't know if Dad Legend will be defeated in this one. I do think that they will advance to the finals. But right. who will face them in the finals? Will it be Nasdormu or the Burdenators? This is the 2-3 matchup, a matchup of teams that uh, had the exact same point total, and I believe, if I remember correctly, this is an entirely, this is five straight mirror matches. Uh, like, all five of these players played the same five people when they faced off in the regular season, so this should be fun. Trippy versus Ron Mexico, myself versus Lil Harthy, and Fall versus Shiny Pants, Two Star Mako versus Medusas, and Saku versus Silver T Fox Demon. Um, I would like to think that my team is going to make a return trip to the finals here. Lotus, do you agree? Um... Be very careful. You already angered me once. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm not sure. I think this match is going to be... I'll make some quick calls here. I think Ron Mexico is going to win against Trippy Toad. I think Loharthy is going to win. Sorry, Donde again. Muted. Muted. I think Anfo and um, Mako are going to win. And I think... Saku has been having a ripper of a season. So I'm going to have to go with him for the Nosdormu win, but I think it comes down to the last seed. That really hurt you to come to the realization that you picked us to win there at the end, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Shire, do you agree? Um, I'm going to disagree. I actually think the Burninators take this one, but I do think it'll be very close. Um, By the way, great team. Um, what, what, one of the best in Hero, for sure. But uh, Yeah, I, I would say... Um, I would say Ron and Lil Harthy probably take it, um, and probably Anfall. Although I, I can definitely see Shiny Pants getting that upset over yeah. Anfall too. Um, I think Mako is looking like more of a lock against Medusa's. Um, and, and then the, the Saku and, and Silver T Fox matchup is going to be close. I'll definitely, I'll, I'll give the edge to Silver T Fox though and say that Burninators will take it. But uh, this is definitely going to be going to be a tight matchup. My boy Saku's won five weeks in a row. I'm confident he makes it six. And I. <sighs> that's it. That's a good streak. That's a good it's streak. A, it's a great yeah. streak. He's been he's been playing out of his mind. <laughs> Love, love the way he's playing right now. And I did lose to Lil Harthy during the regular season. It was a 3-2 game. Mm. Very, very close. Um, definitely Lil Harthy was a better player in that series, so not taking anything away. But I got to get my revenge. It has to be... I've been carried this season. The rest of my team has been doing very, very well, and I've struggled. It's my time to get back on the right side here. And I would not feel... Like, like I would, I would feel useless if we won and I was the one who lost. So let's get back to the winning ways and getting Nostromo back in the finals, second season in a row. Let's do this thing. Good luck to the Burninators. Y'all gonna need it. Oof. So, we have one non-playoff match to talk about. It's our pro match of the week. It's FTL versus the Beard Boys, which we do have a result so far, as Robobson has beat Hockey Boys 3-2 or three to two for a 4-2 FTL lead over the Beard Boys. Now, we talked earlier, Beard Boys trending in the wrong direction, FTL trending in the right direction. Um... What do we think is going to be the end result here? I'll go with our pro guru, Mark Shire, first. Man, this yeah, this is close. This is something that has been like this was a highly anticipated matchup because um, a lot of guys uh, thought that FTL and Beard Boys were going to be the one and the two, or at least uh, clearly both in the top three. And at the beginning of the season, we were like, way before these teams get to match up, and we're finally seeing it here. 
and we already have that one result in as close as it could have been uh rebob taking it three two over hot i will give the edge to ftl here um i do think that myanodon myanodon i do think will beat snake um and and i could see berserk or zabe going either way i'll give the edge to berserk um but then liquid ox and atakshi i do feel um better overall than lesimos and Buzo. pretty confident about the 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 four and the five seeds of ftl taking it here so i, I think they have to be favored um but man this is going to be a great matchup to watch and the thing is there there's a chance that this just goes that that ftl just does really and ends up taking four or even five matchups like i can legitimately see that happening and beard boys could be struggling to even be in playoffs at this point so i know beard boys are going to all the effort that they can this week to make sure they get into playoffs lotus what do you think is going to be the final score here this is such a tight match i think whatever happens this is going to be close um, I kind of have to agree with Mark Shire in a lot of things, but I think, I think this is going to go to FTL. Um, but I really don't see who's going to win against who. I think this is going to be a 3-2 FTL because they already won the first match. That's my prior, but that's all that I can say. Yeah, I think FTL will hang on, uh, to win this one as well. Uh, I do also believe it will be close. Uh, I, I got my end on winning the one seed. Uh, Zabe went in the two, but then Liquid Ox and Itachi are going to take the four and five to round it out for FTL. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a, a close FTL win, but the Veer Boys, I think, will stay alive going into the final week uh, with with enough points to be relevant here. And it should be noted, too, um, very important on the playoff, uh, important important playoff impact here. Aeon is playing the Unknown, who is the one, Aeon's the one seed right now, and Unknown's the four. So that could help uh, both of these teams. You know, if Aeon can put up a bunch of points against Unknown, uh, drop the unknown out of the race. Uh, Menagerie and Taste of Rainbow are kind of both right on the cusp, and they're both playing each other, so one has a chance to effectively eliminate the other. And uh, Tap Last versus the other guys is another interesting matchup. Tap Last ahead of the other guys right now in points could boost them into playoff contention. Uh, another interesting matchup for, for the wrong reasons. Propane Gangs playing Defias. Uh, could be Propane Gangs first one of the season, only one of the season. Be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so we are a little over time right now, but we do have the uh, boomer or zoomer phrases <laughs> that uh, that's that have been submitted. <laughs> um, I'm ready to embarrass myself. My cat has has joined us, so I oh will be yes. soothed no matter what. Highlight, highlight, highlight of the stream. Cat on the stream. So Markshire, hit us with some phrases. Let us know. Uh, you know, we'll pick whether or not they are an actual real phrase that kids say nowadays. All right. So hold on. So I'm going to say the word and then y'all can guess yes or no. And then for bonus points, you can try to guess the meaning of the phrase. If you think that it's an actual zoo. That sounds good. Okay. okay. All right. First off. What? The what do we think? Did, you, you heard you heard that i heard you but i don't yeah know. is that not just um, a laughing track or something no no it it, it wasn't laugh okay do, do, do you want me to type it out will that help <laughs> oh my god sure i'm regretting i'm regretting <laughs> this already oh this is going to be awful all right just real fr- yeah zoomer phrase Okay, I'm gonna guess this is real. I'm gonna guess this is fake. This okay. is too. This is okay. too dumb to be fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that that is a <laughs> that, that, um. Do you wanna you wanna guess at the meeting either of you? Oh boy. My guess is this is the last track. This is like ha ha ha, but cool. Is it somebody like scolding someone else, like a tisk kind of thing? Sorry, say that again, Donde. You Is cut it like, out. like scolding someone like tisk tisk? No, not at all. Oh. No, it's the it's the sound when you're just like mashing key on your keyboard, like if 
you hear something that's really funny, kind of. I don't actually say that at all, so I could be totally butchering its meaning, but that's basically... Uh, this is awesome. um, all right, we can... Yeah, I guess I really needed a word. <laughs> Dada, you're winning, though. All right, um, next one, we've got... What's the frequency, Kenneth? So is that a 30 Rock reference? I think I think uh, I, know, I, don't I think know. I know this one. Okay. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Lotus go first. My guess is this one is real, but I don't actually know. I think okay. it's, I think it's real, and it's to like express displeasure because like what's the frequency would be like WTF. Okay, that's um yeah that's a creative way uh. I have this was something that I think Jim put in Twitch chat. I have this isn't something that people say as long as I can think <laughs> of. Apparently it's an REM. I just I just googled it. Yeah, that's not a. Th Wait, so did both of y'all say that was real? Oh, okay. we were both yeah, wrong. we guessed that it was oh, real. Man. Well, well, that's not. I mean, that's not something I have heard. Any okay. Any millennials say so. Um, cool. All right, next up we got no cap. Like N O C A P two words. Yep, N O space C A P. My guess is that that is actually real. Your guess is that it is. Okay. I, I think it's real as well, but I have no idea what it could possibly mean. Okay. Nice. I think. Uh, well, y'all were. Yeah. Go ahead. I think it means um, any quantity can be as much as you want. As much as. Like, okay, like, like and Dante would you think? Uh, I, I think it means <laughs> is that that like a chemistry to thing, not be, like putting to not be calm. <laughs> like, is it not being calm? Um, uh, not really at all. No, no cap. I'm being serious because cap oh, cap like is kappa. Oh. oh, no, no, nothing, not remotely related to kappa what it's cap <laughs> no it just means like i'm being serious i'm not because cap mm. is lying the children I'm, are wrong hey, the children are wrong are you yeah capping? yeah oh man how many more of these right. do you have <laughs> uh we got a we got a couple mm. we, guys no that no we're gonna keep um all right next one next one up we have hundo p That's real. Okay. I no. have to go with false here. No. Uh, no, it's real. It's real. Okay. It, it means 100%, um, right? It does. So, I'll be honest, I only find that like that one I found online. I've never heard But according <laughs> to this USA Today article, that's Oh, yeah, that's a, the authority on children. So, <laughs> for the purpose of this, we'll count it. We'll count it. I that would say it should be counted as false. <laughs> I've I've just never heard anyone say it, but yeah, yeah that's off. That one might be a push. Do um, we get? Is there any anyone who's like 15 in chat who can verify it? Nah, Tris Tris is in yeah, bed already. I think <laughs> it's past it's past Ox's bedtime too. No, I don't think we have any Zoomers in chat. I'm looking at it. It's too bad. Let me uh, check with Tuse. You All right, more? Um, we're going to go, yes. Um, next, yeah, we have, I'm buzzing like a handsaw. <laughs> okay. uh, I can't do this. So I think this is fake, but if it was going to mean something, it would clearly mean you're drunk, right? Yeah, I'm going with the same here, but yes. Uh. Yeah, I think that's fake. I think Sage put that in dick chat. Um, I've never heard anyone say that, and I don't. I can't say anything. So, yeah, <laughs> that one is fake. Oh, cool. Goodness. All right. Well, I guess we'll call it there. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and say that neither of. Oh, I know. I know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not with it. That's fine. I don't care. Oh man. Well, that's uh, that's. That's one way to end the show, I guess. Uh, certainly, 
certainly interesting. Um, thank you, Mark. Hey, you for did being better here. than I did. I don't know how much better I did than you. It's definitely not that much better if I did it. Oh no, I think Donde got one more. Than did I'm pretty okay. sure. So it wasn't like a blood or anything. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, well, thank thank you for being here, Mark Shire. It was great to have you back again, uh, even if it was temporary. Hopefully, you can be on uh, more if you have the time. Of course, you're always welcome here. Lotus, thank you as well uh, for being here, as always. Oh, and, thank you. And uh, just as a reminder, we do still have the one Saturday night stream spot available, so please let me know if you are interested. Other than that, tomorrow night, Tavern Talk will be back with all of your legacy pro playoff takes you could... Pr- pro playoff legacy playoff takes that you could possibly hope for uh and then we'll start on the matches on friday at 8 p.m so make sure to join us here over the next few days uh plenty of awesome action on stream and uh, best of luck to the teams that are still playing and all the pro matches as well thanks for joining us hope you guys have a great night